coronavirus pandemic not to weaken the Islamic Republic, Pollock. Former CIA analyst Kenneth Pollock believes that there is currently no evidence that the coronavirus crisis has undermined the capabilities of the Islamic Republic of Iran. In the article, The Coronavirus Won't Kill the Islamic Republic, published on the foreign policy, Pollock says despite some deficiencies in Iran's battle against the new pandemic, known as the COVID-19, not only is not the Islamic Republic collapsing, but its conservative forces are becoming stronger. Pollock, who has penned a comprehensive book on the Iran-US relations, first refers to Iran's rank as the seventh country with the most cases of infection in the world. Then, he elaborates on the impact of the U.S. sanctions on Iran's economy and the country's social conditions, explaining how the sanctions have left economic costs to the government and even to the wider social impact on Iranian society. Regarding the negative effects of the U.S. sanctions on Iran, the former CIA analyst raises the question of whether the coronavirus outbreak could lead to the collapse of the Islamic Republic of Iran. His answer is no, because he believes that a significant portion of the Iranian people continue to fully support the country's leaders. Pollock also adds that there is currently no indication that the pandemic has undermined the capabilities of the government in Iran. The full loyalty of the armed forces to the establishment, as well as the growing strength of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, is another highlight of Kenneth Pollock's article. He points out the reasons why the possibility of any change in revolution in Iran is unlikely. Firstly, no revolution takes place without widespread protests, and now, due to the coronavirus crisis, the likelihood of protests and marches has diminished. According to the author, COVID-19 has even made the protest movements in Lebanon and Iraq less likely. Secondly, the conservative groups in Iran have shown a more responsible general response to the crisis than the pragmatic groups. The article delineates the IRGC's response to the outbreak as much more appropriate and timelier than that of the others. In the end, the author concludes that it is unlikely that the crisis of the coronavirus prevalence will lead to the weakening of establishment in Iran. Actually, contrary to this idea, the coronavirus could even boost the conservative groups in Iran as world leaders grapple with a pandemic that is forcing them to reshuffle their priorities. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has stuck largely to his pre-crisis script, doubling down on the administration's hardline Iran stance and unveiling a new effort to oust Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro from power. His continued focus on these issues leaves some experts and former diplomats worried that Pompeo, and by extension the Trump administration, is too narrowly fixated on a select few foreign policy objectives, instead of rallying the world around a unified response to the coronavirus pandemic. All the while, critics worry that China is happily stepping in to fill the void as it edges closer to global superpower status. I'm hugely disappointed in the administration for its lack of international leadership, vented one senior State Department official, speaking on condition of anonymity. It's all been about the US here, not really coordinating at all with allies. Why Pompeo is still back pushing a pre-coronavirus agenda when the Chinese are stepping up with ill-founded pretensions toward international leadership, is beyond me, said Daniel Fried, the former longest-serving US diplomat at the State Department until his retirement in 2017. There's a crying need for American leadership. The world has almost given up waiting for us, but if we step into this space, it would be welcome.